brought Biden to the negotiating table like we were talking about when he didn't want to do that. They got spending cuts when Biden didn't want to do that. Uh, for Biden, maybe it's going to be a little more tricky because uh, the deal actually has been praised by uh, like deficit hawks at the Committee for Responsible Federal Budgets, one I pay a lot of attention to. They, they said it was really great, one of the best uh, deals in like over 10 years as far as raising the deficit, or excuse me, lowering the deficit. Right. Uh, but of course, Biden for so long was saying, I don't want any spending cuts, I only want a clean debt ceiling hike. Right. So he can't really go out and, and brag about so easily uh, how it also cuts spending when he was saying for so long he didn't really want to do that in the first place. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle, I'm joined today by White House reporter Hasten Willis. Hasten, President Biden, he's touted his experience as a bipartisan deal maker. He struck a pretty big bipartisan deal, potentially, depending on, as we film this, some, some votes of the Senate, potentially ending a really prolonged stalemate. Talk a little bit about what Biden has done on the debt ceiling. Yeah, I think he got uh, mostly what he was probably looking for on that. Uh, both sides have kind of already started to declare victory on this and kind of sure. say, okay, we got what we wanted out of the deal. So, um, but if you look at kind of the whole trend of this thing, it goes all the way back to about January is when they first started, uh, the Republicans first started talking about this. Uh, Biden's hands for a long time was at no negotiation. We're not going to negotiate at all. We only mm -hmm. want uh, what they called a clean debt ceiling raise that did not address spending. We're not even going to have a meeting about this, right? Mm -hmm. And they eventually they did, in fact, have a series of meetings. Um, they did, in fact, except some spending cuts as well. Um, so in that sense, Biden did kind of backtrack from his original stance. That probably was always going to happen. I don't know if they were ever really realistically going to be able to get that. And um, it, was, and it mm -hmm. was in one bill, you know, at this time. It, they're, they're not they're not necessarily, the, the whole framework is part of the same piece of legislation. Yes. Meaning why? Well, meaning that the, the Biden's way out originally was no negotiation on debt ceiling, negotiation on budget. And he can say that they negotiated on budget, but clearly the debt ceiling was raised conditionally, conditionally based on these bu this budget framework. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so that, that happened as well. Um, but like I said, the White House is, is trying to um, say that they basically get what they wanted. They've kind of talked about, well, we technically gave up uh, this spending cut or that spending cut, but really it didn't really matter that much. I kind of kind of massaging it and saying that there weren't really that many that many deep cuts. So yeah, he can I think uh, going forward here say that he successfully negotiated the thing. We avoided catastrophe. You know that some agro Republicans want him thinking things he might may, may say right. uh, in the future here um, sure. and say that he successfully uh, negotiated raising the the debt limit. And they got a lot of Democrats to vote for it, at least in the House, even though most of them were not very happy with it. Yeah, that was really interesting. Uh, McCarthy, uh, you know, he has a very, very narrow majority. Uh, there were different rules they even put in place for him to become a speaker where he can be recalled relatively easily. And yeah, more Democrats voted for the deal in the House than Republicans did, which could be bad for McCarthy and, and also could be a win for Biden. So talk a little bit about, you know, they had these negotiations the big question, I guess, is everybody is now claiming victory uh, is, you know, whose deal is this really? Is it is it President Biden's? Is it House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's? Is it really a collaboration between the two of them? Right. I think the Republicans are really going to go big on this, to, you know, runaway spending, whatever was curtailed by this debt limit bill. They have kind of a clear thing they can talk about because they brought Biden to the negotiating table like we were talking about when he didn't want to do that. They got spending cuts when Biden didn't want to do that. Uh, for Biden, maybe it's going to be a little more tricky because uh, the deal actually has been praised by uh, like deficit hawks at the Committee for Responsible Federal Budgets, one I pay a lot of attention to. They, they said it was really great, one of the best uh, deals in like over 10 years as far as raising the deficit, or excuse me, lowering the deficit. Right. Uh, but of course, Biden for so long was saying, I don't want any spending cuts, I only want a clean debt ceiling hike. Right. So he can't really go out and, and brag about so easily uh, how it also cut spending when he was saying for so long he didn't really want to do that in the first place. So that's a little bit tricky for them. Uh, but I think, like I said, they can still kind of use their own talking points and um, declare victory as well. Now the race among people who want to replace President Biden in the 2024 presidential election is also heating up with the entry <laughs> of not only Ron DeSantis, Florida governor, to the presidential race, but mm -hmm. he's now hit the campaign trail and he's really starting to take a different tack toward former President Trump, is he not? He has. Things have really changed just over the last week or so. Uh, Biden, uh, excuse me, not Biden, uh, DeSantis spent a few days in Iowa. Uh, our own uh, reporter Naomi Lim was there, had a lot of great coverage um, of, of his doings. But yeah, he is, uh, for, for a long time he was not 
talking about Trump, literally wouldn't even say Trump's name. Uh, Trump started attacking him, I guess, in the spring, saying all these terrible things about him and coming up with various nicknames and things like that. DeSantis mm -hmm. kind of pulled his punches. Uh, he's declared as a candidate now, and he's now talking about Trump and going on offense. He talked about uh, how Trump moved to Florida while he was governor, so mm -hmm. any criticism was sort of undercut. Uh, in that sense, he talked about how uh, Trump turned the country over to Fauci uh, his last year of the presidency, uh, really kind of going on the offense, uh, talking about, about Trump and, and attacking him. He even said directly, so I'm going to punch back, which is something he really wasn't doing before. So things are totally, totally different now, it seems like, now that he is a declared candidate. And Trump has seemed to be willing to launch a full frontal assault on DeSantis' record in Florida in ways that seem to run counter to what national Republican messaging, including Trump's own, has been for the past few years. He has, yeah. Trump has been uh, you know, a little bit, I would say, inconsistent as far as the, uh, what policy goal he's, he's kind of going after. For example, uh, the Disney thing, he's criticized um, DeSantis for going after Disney so aggressively, but has also at other times said that Disney uh, basically went woke in Florida under DeSantis' watch. So also kind of implying there that DeSantis didn't do enough to stop Disney. Right. So, you know, he, he kind of attacks, I guess, whatever attack that seems uh, useful to him that day, maybe he, he goes after. Um, so those are things that I think DeSantis will be talking about as well over the next few weeks. I mean, the whole Disney thing is kind of goofy. <laughs> Depending on who you're talking to, yes. Thank you, Hasten. You can read Haston and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.